Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create data packs in Minecraft Java Edition. My name is CodeZealot and I'm going to be taking you through the very basics of data pack creation all the way to the very end of making advanced data packs. What we're going to do in this tutorial is go ahead and get started with the very basics, which is setting up the file structure for our data pack. Now I have in the description below a template for you to download, so go ahead and do that now. You can pause the video and once you have that, we can resume. Now, once you have that downloaded, let's go ahead and open up our Minecraft folder. If you don't know how to find the Minecraft folder, you can look in the description of this video for a quick uh, explanation of how to do that, whether you're on Ubuntu like I am, or on Windows, or on OS X Mac. It doesn't matter. It's a little different for each of those operating systems, but in the end, we're all going to wind up here together. So. You can do that, or if you just want to Google search it, that's fine too. Now, once you're in your Minecraft folder, what you want to do is give your data pack a place to live. And so we need to go into our saves directory, which has all of the saves that we've created in Minecraft. Now, once we're in here, you can see that I have one world in my saves, which is called data pack tutorial. And I'm going to go into that Minecraft world directory. And then I'm going to look for the directory called data packs. And so now in the future, as a reference, uh, anytime you make an additional data pack that you want to run in this world, you have to put it inside of this directory with the data pack that we're going to create today. Or if you download a data pack off the internet and you don't know where it goes so you can play with it, you need to go and put it into the directory right here, data packs inside of whatever world or save that you want to play it on. So. Let's go ahead and open up this data packs directory and inside you can go ahead and place your template.zip. So here's mine, I'm gonna go ahead and extract it. Or if you're on a different operating system, I don't know if you say extract, maybe you say unzip it. Go ahead and do whatever you do to make the directory appear. And congratulations, you now have your very first data pack in Minecraft Java edition. Now what we're gonna do is give this data pack a name and we're going to make this a human readable name, which means right now the way I have it isn't as readable as it could be because it has these underscores instead of spaces and there's no capitals. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a human readable name for our data pack. And I'm just going to call this my data pack. And so this is the name of our data pack. Feel free to use whatever name you would like for your data pack and make sure it's something that makes sense for what your data pack does. Now, once you have that done, go ahead and open up your data pack and we're going to start talking about the file structure of the actual data pack itself. Now, inside of our data pack, we see that there are two things. First, there's a directory or a folder called data. And secondly, there is this file, which is very important, called pack.mcmeta. Let's go ahead and look first at pack.mcmeta and see what this is and what we need to do to it to make our data pack work. So I'm going to be using Sublime Text for this tutorial as always. So you can use whatever text editor you want, so long as you are writing in plain text. So you need to have uh, the ability to write in plain text because if not, if you're writing in some other format, it's not going to work. So make sure you're using plain text editor, such as uh, uh, there's a bunch of them, Text Wrangler or Komodo or I think uh, Notepad++, I think is what it's called in Windows, whatever you're using. I recommend Sublime Text. I use it for everything I do. Uh, but if you're not going to use Sublime Text, make sure you're using something that writes in plain text. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go back to my data packs folder, just go back one directory and drag this in as a project, which will make it much easier to see our file tree over here. So let me minimize this and let's go back to talking about pack.mcmeta. Now, there are two things that we need to really look at in this file. The first one is the pack format, and the second is the description. Currently, I'm in version 1.15 in Java edition. I can't remember if I said the version number just yet. And they've just now made this uh, more significant. In the past, it didn't really matter which number was here. Uh, it didn't really do anything. But now in 1.15, they are in the, uh, uh, what's it called? The documentation, the uh, the wiki. In the wiki they're talking about now, you need to put pack format 5 if you're in 1.15 uh, because it will, it'll still work if it's the wrong number, but it's going to throw an error now, which in the past it didn't throw an error. So put go ahead and put 5 if you're on 1.15. If you're in a later version in the future, just go ahead and look at the Minecraft wiki and it will tell you exactly what number needs to go here. Next, we're going to put a description for our data pack. So we want to put something here that makes sense that actually describes what our data pack does. 
And since this data pack is just a tutorial, I don't really know what it's going to do. So I'm just going to put uh, something interesting here, which is already uh, written here. But if you already know what you're going to be making, go ahead and put a description here about what your data pack is going to do. And where you're going to see this show up is when you're in game and you type slash data pack list, you'll be able to see the description here. So if somebody has a world with multiple data packs installed, they can hover over top of those data packs and they can read what they do by reading this description. So once you have these two things taken care of, you have a pack format number of five, if you're in 1.15 or whatever uh, number in the future, and you have a description that you want, go ahead and save and we're ready to move on now to the data directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back up just for people who, uh, find this hard to read, but I'll leave it over here on the side so you can look at both. And we're going to go inside of this data directory. So we're now inside of it here, and I'm going to go ahead and drop it down here. Now inside of this directory is pretty much the heart of our data pack. We have two different directories. One is called Minecraft, and the other one is currently called Namespace. So let's go ahead and talk about what each of these are. What these are are basically the way you can make it simple is just saying that they are containers for everything that's yours and a container for everything that is just vanilla Minecraft. And if you want to overwrite something in vanilla Minecraft, it's going to go into the Minecraft folder. And if you want to add something new of your own, it's going to go into your folder. I mean, that's basically the most simplistic way to say it. If you don't know what a namespace is, basically that's exactly what it is conceptually, but what it does is it keeps conflicts from happening. So let's just take a little side note here and I'm just going to open up a new file. You don't need this for making a data pack. I'm just using an example here for clarity. And what a namespace does is say that you make a function and it has a certain name. So say your function's name is create something. And Minecraft, you didn't know this, but Minecraft has its own function and it's also called create something. You see, I wrote creative. That means I play way too much Minecraft changing game mode. <laughs> Anyways, say Minecraft has a function called create something and you have a function that you wrote called create something. Well, when time comes for you, this function to run in your data pack, the game might get a little confused. Wait a minute. You want me to run function create something, but which one? There are two of them with the same name. Well, what the namespace does is it keeps that from happening. So Minecraft will always have its namespace of Minecraft with a colon and then whatever your data pack's namespace is. So I usually put CZ dash and then whatever the data pack is. So this one's going to be a tutorial. So I'll use CZ tut. Now Minecraft knows, oh, there are two functions that are called create something, but they actually have two different names now because one's called CZ tut create something and the other one's called Minecraft create something. So anyways, that's a little side note on namespaces. If you didn't know what those are, they're pretty important. So as long as you understand that these are two containers, one for Minecraft code, that's vanilla and you're going to overwrite. And the other one is for your own stuff that you're creating that's new, you'll be okay. So let's go ahead now and look into the Minecraft folder because this is going to be where we find two very important files that are related to our data pack development. So once we open up the Minecraft, we see there's another directory called tags. Go ahead and open that up. And there's another one called functions. Go ahead and open up that one. And now you'll be faced with two JSON files. One's called load and the other one's called tick. I'll go ahead and do it here for people uh, who want to follow along here. And you'll see that there are the two files right here. Let's go ahead and open them here in Sublime Text. I'm just gonna drag them in to keep it easy and talk about them. So the first one we're gonna look at is called tick.json. Now, if you don't know what a tick is in Minecraft, basically it's the equivalent of what we talk about in our time as like seconds and minutes and hours. Pretty much the tick is the smallest unit. And if you didn't know, for every second, there are 20 ticks. And so a tick, one single tick is worth 20 seconds in real time. And what tick.json does is it runs whatever you tell it to right here, whatever this value is in this in these square brackets, uh, which is an array, whatever you put here is gonna run every tick. And so pretty much this is a loop. It continuously is gonna run whatever function is found here over and over and over and over. And that's what's gonna make your data pack work. It's what's gonna make your data pack tick, you could say. And so the way I like to do things is some people put all of their functions in here and they just make a really long list of all the things they wanna run once every tick. And that's fine, that works for them. But to me, that's just so messy and I just can't work that way. And so what I do is I go ahead and I just make a function inside of my data pack called main. 
And that's the main function of my data pack. And its job is basically to run everything that I want run in my data pack. And so that's what I'll be doing in this tutorial. I recommend that you follow along doing this. And uh, since this is a tutorial, if you don't follow along, it's not going to work. So go ahead and do what I'm doing and put the namespace of your data pack. Now, we haven't really talked about giving our data pack a namespace just yet. Uh, if you look over here in the sidebar, you see that there's that directory called namespace. We're actually going to rename that. So let's go ahead and do it now at the same time that we're going to be doing it here. So whatever you want to give for your namespace, go ahead and do that now. The only thing you need to know is that you should use a, a uh, computer readable name. So not a human readable. So don't put any spaces. That's a big no-no. Don't put spaces and don't put any capitals. Just put all lower space. And if you want a space, use an underscore or something like that. So what I'm going to use here is I'm going to use CZ and I'm going to use uh, this dash or this hyphen and I'm going to go ahead and put tut and that's just going to be for this data pack. That's going to be the namespace that I'll be using. And so now I have my directory CZ tut and we have the Minecraft uh, directory. There's two containers we've been talking about. So now inside of tick.json, whenever it goes to run this file, it's going to look for this right here. And so there's no directory called namespace. There is no namespace called namespace now since we just renamed it. And so we need to say that this is going to be your namespace. So whatever you named yours, I named mine CZ Tut. And so that is what it needs to be. And what it's saying is, hey, you're going to run a function once per tick. And what you're going to run is inside of this container. It's going to be inside of this folder and it's going to be called main. That's the name of the function. So guess what? If we open up this directory here, our namespace, you'll see that there are all kinds of directories here we're going to talk about in a minute. But what we're running here is a function. And so if we go in functions, we can see that there is our main function. And so this is what tick.json is going to be running once per tick. It's going to be running a particular function that's found inside the namespace of CZ tut right here inside the functions folder since it's a function and it's going to have the name of main and there it is. And so this is where we're going to be putting all of our code for our data pack that we want to run continuously. So that's it for tick.json. Make sure you go ahead and save that. And now we're going to look at load.json. So right now we're going to do the same exact same thing here. We're going to rename our namespace to whatever it is. So CZ tut. And I like to make another function in my data packs called reload. And same as before, you could put all the functions here that you want to run every time that somebody runs reload and that would work, but that's messy. So go ahead and just make your namespace and make a separate function called reload. And then you can put all your reload code in there and it'll work much better. So go ahead and save that. And we'll just stop talking about uh, the reload function for now because I know there's a lot of information and we don't need to focus on that right now because the point of this video is just getting everything set up and getting something in main.mc function because that's uh, pretty much the basics of data pack creation. So now that we have these, these files set up, which if you remember are inside of the Minecraft container, not our container, not our namespace, it's in the Minecraft namespace, we're ready to move on now to actually working in our own namespace. So just to help you guys keep your, your head on straight about where we are, I'm just going to use this back button now and we're going to go back one into the tags directory. We're going to go back one more and we're going to go back another one. And now we're back into that data folder, the data directory with those two containers, the Minecraft one we were just working in and the directory container that we just renamed to whatever our namespace is. So let's go ahead now and spend the last few minutes of this video inside of this directory. Now that we're inside of here, we see that there are all kinds of different types of data that we have inside of a data pack. When people talk about data packs, 90% of the time they're talking about functions. Uh, and that's just the way it usually goes. Just, you know, when you want to make something in Minecraft, you usually have to write a function. And so most data pack development is going to happen inside of this directory. But as you can see, there are so many different things that you can hook into in Minecraft in your data pack, such as custom advancements, custom loot tables, which is like whenever you kill a mob, it drops whatever item you want, or uh, you fill chest with random loot that you specify, you know, however you want to make the randomizer, you know, that's what a loot table is. Predicates are new. That's in 1.15. We'll talk about those later in a future video. 
recipes, custom crafting recipes, structures that generate in the world, and then tags, which are perhaps the most useful thing in data packs. And we'll save that for the future. But basically what it is, is you can make your own grouping of entities uh, or items or blocks, whatever. And it makes it really easy when you're writing functions in the future to reference groups of things instead of having to write them all out one by one. So for the ending of this video, go ahead and open up your functions directory. And we're gonna look at our very first function here in our data pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up here to sublime text. And so we can see it, I'm gonna click here. And what you see inside of this main function is just what I call, or you know, basically everyone calls a watermark uh, or just a credit. Uh, what this does is it pretty much uh, just says who created this data pack. If you wanna find out who they are, go to their website, go to their YouTube channel, go to their Twitter, whatever. This is just what I use. You guys can erase this since it's your data pack now and put your own stuff in here and just use this template or you can make your own. And what this does is, you know, you paste it in the main function or in all the functions and just help people if they download your data pack off the internet, figure out who you are and get in contact with you if they want to maybe collaborate with you in the future or if they have a question about a data pack or perhaps if they found it in a later version and they want to update it for you, whatever. Go ahead and do this. It's There's nothing uh, that can harm you in doing this. It can only help you. Uh, help people understand who made the data pack and also how they can get in contact with you to collaborate and to, to work on this data pack together. So make your own watermark, use mine, whatever you want to do, doesn't matter, or just simply erase it uh, if you want. And uh, we'll move on now to putting in some actual code into our data pack. Now, this is going to be the end of this video because at this point you have downloaded the template, you've unzipped it, you've renamed your namespace to whatever you needed to, and you've set up the load JSON file, you've set up the tick JSON file, and you've updated the pack.mc meta. And so at this point, you have a 100% working data pack of your own, and you're ready to see that in action. So let's end this video with a simple command of just say, we did it, and save it. And now we're going to go ahead and open up Minecraft, and we're going to see this actually working. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Minecraft version 1.15.1, which is what we're currently in. And I'm going to go directly to that save that I made, which is housing this data pack. And once I run the game, you're going to see that this data pack is working. So let's go ahead and see this in action here. And as we're waiting on this load, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say, go ahead and look down in the description for a link to my new website, uh, codezealot.com, where I'm going to have tutorials, not just in video format, but also blog format for Java edition and also for Bedrock uh, bedrock development for add-ons, behavior packs, and resource packs as well. And if you haven't yet joined the Discord server, go ahead and join that now. We have all kinds of things in there. Uh, Minecraft command help channels for people who have questions about how to do something in Minecraft. We have showcase channels. If you've built something you're proud of, you want to share it, you can find all kinds of places in there to share data packs, share resource packs, whatever. And also all of the latest news for the Panea RPG, MMORPG server, uh, all of that project is in there as well so you can get all the latest news for that and any other data pack that i'm creating all the latest news will be in there so here we are and you see that our data pack is working the data pack is running the command that we have in our main file right here say we did it and it's running it once every tick which is 20 times per second and so that's that's the reason for the spam and if you see if i type something in the chat you'll see that it's, it's running pretty quick because that'll go right up right away in the chat so there you go guys uh if you type in data pack list uh you will see that you have your description showing as well uh for whatever you put in your mc uh your mc meta file say i'm messing up here i'm getting getting this wrong. <laughs> well, it's a long video and it's late at night. So I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and make sure you hit the bell so you get the notification for when the next data pack tutorial is out on this channel. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.